the Colt Junior in 25 ACP. Let's check it out. Now my mouse gun collection is growing, but one really significant pistol that was missing was the Colt Jr. Or what I like to call the Mighty Mouse. <laughs> this is a small little quality 25 ACP pocket pistol. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys are you know wondering what in the world are you doing with 25 ACP? Guys, this is just a piece of history. It's a, it has a lot to do with self-defense for a number of years. Uh, because of the size of the new 380s, the little micro 380s, these fell out of favor really quickly because you're getting so much more ballistically with a 380, even a 32, than you do this 25 ACP. But they're still really small, compact, and they are smaller than the standard uh, 380 ACP. But also, they have hardly any recoil. Um, you know, a lot of people have collected these over the years, or they have gotten them, inherited them, somebody's given them to them, and uh, they trust in these for self-defense. So going through some of these pistols and talking about the defense is really important, because if you have one of these and you're relying on it for self-defense, you're really going to be undergunned, but it's better than nothing. The Colt Jr. was made from 1957 uh, to 1974. Now there's some very particular things about the Colt Jr. itself. For one thing, uh, this came from the original Colt 1908 hammerless pocket pistol, which was made from uh, 1908 and produced up till 1948. It was a very popular firearm. They sold about 400,000, and you know, 25 ACP was still a very popular pocket pistol uh, during that time. And so in 1957, they got together with Astra out of Spain and began to develop the Colt Jr. The Colt Jr. is actually an Astra Cub, which was being made by Astra. And Colt gave them the license uh, to produce their, their Colt pistols. Now, this went till 1968, and when they had the Gun Control Act of 1968, a lot of these really small firearms could not be imported into the U.S., uh, and from that time, Colt decided to go ahead and produce these in the U.S. from 1968 to 1974. Now, there are a couple of ways to be able to identify uh, whether this was made in Spain. And the easiest is right here on the frame. It says, Made in Spain for Colt. It was a Colt license. You know, all the different symbols will be Colt. Another way to tell is the serial number. And at the end of the serial number, it has a CC. And that means that it was made uh, by Astra. Uh, the Colt original made firearms in Hartford, Connecticut have OD before the serial number. Now, this serial number denotes that this pistol was made right at the end. This is one of the last productions of the Astra. And then right here at the top of the slide is also the serial number, which matches the frame. And then we can see here with the Colt emblem, manufacturing company, Hartford, Connecticut. But this gun was made in Spain. Here on the other side we have the Junior Colt and then Caliber 25. Uh, now they went from, they dropped the Junior uh, once they started making them in the U.S. Uh, and not right away, but they began to call this just the Colt Automatic 25. Now this gun has been safety checked, but we're going to go ahead and double make sure and uh, remove the magazine. You can see that we have our mag release right here at the base of the grip. Uh, and this is a 7 plus 1 magazine. I pulled the chamber back and it is clear. Uh, now we have the hammer in the rear position. This is a single action pistol and that means that this gun cannot, the hammer cannot be pulled back just with the pull of the trigger. That first round you have to pull the hammer back. Now you'll notice to me immediately that this is a, mag has a magazine disconnect. Uh, and I would not uh, recommend dry firing these pistols. 
Um, I have a lot of these different uh, little 25 ACPs in this similar design and the firing pins will break. Uh, you can see you have a commander hammer and it does have a beaver tail right here to keep from slide bite. Uh, if you have really meaty hands you could still get it up there high. Uh, so if you do have big hands be careful shooting these or any of these little small pistols because that slide even though it is 25 ACP it can really give you a good bite on your on the web of your hand. Um, this was made in 25 ACP and 22 short. It does have the nice wood grips but it also came in a hard rubber grip and I think the originals were the hard rubber uh, which was typical for a lot of the Colts but this is the wood and it's really a very well hard wood it's really a nice wood grip has serrations right here on the slide for you to be able to bring that back pretty easily and then here at the top of the slide right across the top uh, it has serrations to keep glare down the sights are very low to the pistol they're just built into the pistol here just a little groove and then at the end a little small notch uh, they are very low and of course this is a concealed carry pistol It's what it's designed for and so you know that's one of the reasons why you're not gonna and really you're not gonna be shooting this pistol at great distances now right here you can see that we have a safety just comes up and fits in that little notch there uh, but this also is a slide stop so when you bring it back it locks into this position uh, one of the things that happened to me when I was shooting it one time I inadvertently hit it and it went up and it locked the slide back and I couldn't tell what was going on right at first. There we go, so it pops forward. Uh, and this is the only safety. Uh, on the original 1908s, or what Colt called the Model N, it had a grip safety here and then it also had a frame safety right back here at the back. The lines on this are very nice. The bluing is well done. Uh, you know, even though this was a Astra made pistol, this is still highly collectible and these bring pretty high prices. I found this at a local gun show this uh, past weekend. Uh, you know, I've been doing a number of mouse gun reviews, some of the small pistols, and you know, I paid $400 for it. He was asking $450, and uh, I looked on Gun Broker, and that's pretty much the prices are going around $450 and up. Now, if you get one of the Colt models, it can really get up there, sometimes up to the you know eight nine hundred dollar range, just according to where you find them. But um, Gun Broker is usually a good place to find a lot of pistols like this. Here we have the extractor right here, and um, it's just a real simple design, but it's very beautiful, I think. The magazine, I'm not positive that this is a uh, the original magazine. It is nickel plated. Uh, and, but uh, it does feed well. And one of the great things about it being a Colt is that there are magazines available and uh, there are parts available and grips and things like that. So when you get something that's a pretty well-known brand, sort of like the Baby Browning or any of the FNs, uh, the parts seem to be a lot easier to come by. I do have a couple of pistols, uh, like a, I have a CZ duo I believe it is and it's I'm having a hard time finding a firing pin for it and there are a couple of others where parts can be scarce but that's one of the great things about the small Colts is that parts of course they were made here in the US so they're they're very available this pistol weighs 13.1 ounces is four and a half inches in length and it's three and a quarter inches in height uh, the width is about three quarter of inches even at the grip the slide is just super thin I mean this is a really small pocket pistol uh, or it could be great for an ankle pistol um, you know a really neat gun for a backup if you want to carry obviously 25 ACP we've got the usual suspects lined up here we have the 22 long rifle uh, then we have the 25 ACP 32 ACP, 380 ACP, and 9mm. Self-defense experts really pretty much agree that 380 ACP is the lowest round you need to depend on in a self-defense situation. Of course, 32, all these calibers, uh, the 25 and the 22, are lethal. <laughs> so, but one of the things you have to consider is, is even though it's lethal, you know, it may take a while for, you know, an attacker to give up once they've been shot with some of these rounds. Uh, with the 380 ACP, you're getting a little more power and uh, more like a, three, a 38 Special. And of course, 9mm is known for its self-defense capability. 
But one of the things that I, I always talk about, especially here, is there are people that have 25 ACPs. That's what they carry. And they're not going to go buy another pistol. Yes, in a, in a perfect world, they'd go out and buy, you know, a 9mm or 40 or 45. Uh, but that's just not always the case. In fact, I've got a couple of friends that carry 25, and I've talked to them, and this is just what they're going to carry. They're not interested in buying another gun, or they may not be able to afford another gun. If you have a 25 ACP and you're depending on it, you need to understand the limitations of that round. Um, and it is shot placement is very important, but even then, uh, 25 ACP is really, uh, you need to shoot all the rounds out of your magazine. Now these pistols have been very popular over the years and of course with the advent of the 380 being a very small micro pistol a lot of the 25s kind of went the way of the dinosaur. I mean, you know, when you can have a 380 ACP that's pretty much just a little larger than this uh, with so much more capability, it's really better to go with uh, you know, the 380. But again, there are going to be people that carry this. And honestly, there are times where I'm carrying a 9mm on my hip, and yet I have a 25, uh, you know, tucked away maybe in a pocket or in an ankle holster just as a backup. The rule of thumb is if you have to use a 25 ACP, use it and then get the heck out of there. <laughs> But even not for self-defense, the 25 ACP is a lot of fun to take to the range. The recoil is super low. Um, you know, one of the problems is, obviously, is finding ammunition. And I go by uh, Palmetto State Armory. They typically have it, or Cabela's has had it quite a bit. And, uh, you know, you end up paying a little more than you would for some other rounds. But it's a really cool piece of history. It is a firearm, and it does increase in value. Uh, to me, this is more of a collector piece than a self-defense piece. And I really would highly recommend that if you can afford something uh, with more potential for self-defense, I please do so. But if you don't, use what you have. You know the old song, love the one you're with. <laughs> and I'd rather have my 25 ACP in my pocket than have my 45 ACP at home on my nightstand. There's absolutely no recoil with this pistol. Uh, it's very easy to shoot and uh, it's really a lot of fun to shoot. Now 25 ACP is not uh, all that plentiful and when you do find it it's fairly expensive. Uh, so and when I say fairly expensive you know you can find some of this ammo for 16, 17, 18 dollars a box and up. Uh, and there are some you know high defense loads, some really quality self-defense loads to go in here but honestly I think I would stick with the full metal jacket because you have more mass. One of the things about a 25 ACP over a 22, and the reason why John Browning developed the 25 ACP is that it is more reliable than a rimfire cartridge. Now, rimfire cartridges now are much more reliable than they were when John Browning designed this caliber, but that's the purpose for designing the 25 ACP. And really, you're going to have less malfunctions with 25 than you will with a 22 pistol. These little Colts are very reliable. I did have one malfunction, and it was the time I was shooting from the hip at the rubber dummy. And I think maybe I might have limp-wristed it or just the way I was shooting. It did have one hang-up. But other than that, I shot about 150 rounds of 25. In fact, I depleted uh, most of what I had left. But, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun to shoot, and I just couldn't quit shooting it. It's fairly accurate. I mean, it's really small. It has really tiny uh, sights. It was shooting low, and uh, as you can see on the target, but, um, you know, really, uh, you know, for up close and personal, and that's what this gun is for. It really needs to be something that's close. And, um, and of course, you're hiding this gun anyway. I mean, it's a deep cover type pistol. Uh, having this as a home defense gun, I would really caution you on that. Uh, but 25 ACP is lethal regardless of what the experts say. Uh, in fact, there's been numerous cases of fatalities with 25 ACP in self-defense situations. Now, disassembly of these pistols is really easy. Uh, drop your magazine. Let's go ahead and double check and make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, bring back your slide and engage your slide stop. Right here in this little groove right here. Uh, once you do that, you take your barrel and you just turn it. Uh, actually, you turn it clockwise. And once you get it turned around, you just release your slide stop and everything just comes right out. We have a steel guide rod with recoil spring. And then take your barrel and turn it to where the grooves are facing you and then just pull it right out. 
and that's it. I mean, that is a very simple design. I've had some because they didn't have the slide lock that you had to hold back and turn it, and it was it's kind of a touchy <laughs> and very unnerving, but this was really easy. The grooves right here in the frame coincide with the grooves in the barrel, and that is what you, where you're getting your lock up. But you can see it's a really simple design, and the great thing about that is it's easy to work on if you have any kind of issues. One thing that I thought was kind of fascinating is you can see your safety disconnect right here. It kind of folds down, and when the magazine goes in, it knocks that spring out of the way. I thought that was a pretty cool design feature. For reassembly, take your guide rod and just slide it into the hole right here in the frame. Take your barrel, again with the grooves up, place it in. Just get it started. And capture your guide rod once you go over your slide to frame. And then bring it back and engage your slide stop here. Now you can turn your barrel and get it into place and then just turn it and lock it in. Here you can see the little smiley face will be on the bottom. And once we get that, just release your slide stop and it'll go home and then double check for function. You'll have to put the magazine in to pull the trigger. And there we go. Back in business. Junior, Colt Junior. To give you a little frame of reference, this is a Glock 43 and 380 ACP, which is a pretty small pistol uh, compared to the uh, 25 Junior. Uh, you can see that it's still fairly larger. Uh, if you go with maybe the Ruger LCP, I just didn't have it with me, but it is definitely smaller. But really, you're not going with a whole lot more, and these are pretty thin as well. Uh, but one of the things about it, if you really need to carry something really small, uh, this can hide well. And if you need to hide something, this is a much better hideout gun. But again... This 380 ACP is a much better self-defense round. So the Colt Jr. and 25 ACP, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. I was really looking for one of the Colt Juniors. It is a seven plus round. It's a seven plus round. <laughs> now, when you, now if you're using this for now if you're using this for, but it did have one hookup. I mean, the Colt Junior was okay. now the Colt Junior was developed. But okay. now the Colt Junior was made from 1968. Okay. 